To mark the 200th anniversary of the founding of the town of Greece, the Greece Historical Society presents a bicentennial snapshot. Each week, we take a look at a particular aspect of Greece history. This week, bicentennial snapshot number 20, Husik, West Greece. Today, we are back on tour of the settlements in the town of Greece. West Greece, as we noted in episode 18, was also called Husik, after Husik Falls near Albany, New York, from where some of the first settlers in West Greece came. The hamlet, settled in very early 1800s, was clustered around the intersection of Ridge Road and Manitow Road. It had its own post office, hotels, a school, a corner store, churches, a blacksmith shop, and a doctor's office. Manitow Road marks the boundary between the towns of Parma and Greece. The east side of the road is in Greece, and the west side is in Parma. In fact, the line passed right through the center of the Congregational Church, and Manitow Road had to take a jog around the church. The doctor, as you may also recall from episode 18, was Samuel Beach Bradley. More about him in our next snapshot. His residence and office were in the southeast sector of the crossroads of Ridge and Manitow, just south of the Congregational Church. The office is indicated by the arrow. Bradley kept a journal all his life, and it is from his diaries that we know about the earliest days of West Greece and Parma. He described the settlement in a letter to the editor of the journal, a predecessor of the Spencerport Star, which was reprinted in the Hilton Record in 1967. Dr. Bradley wrote, As you are aware, this is a rural hamlet of 30 or 40 houses, situated on the Ridge Road, three and one-half miles from Spencerport. It may be considered a dependency of that place, for there we go for lumber, stoves and hardware, also medicines and medical advice and attendance. There we also sell our produce. Worship service of the Congregational Church, organized in 1819, were first held in the school building at Parma Corners. The congregation numbered 21 members, 7 men and 14 women. Construction on the church, shown in this photo, was begun in 1824 and completed in 1825. It was a wood structure, 40 by 50 feet, and cost $2,950, approximately $96,000 in today's terms. It was consecrated on July 6, 1825. At the same time in Parma, the Universalist Church was constructed, and the two churches were in competition with each other to attract the most prominent residents to join their congregations. The Congregational Church had a bit of a tumultuous history. Over the next 50 years, they were in and out of the Presbytery of Rochester. In the late 1840s, the church was divided over Oberlinism. Oberlinism was based on the philosophy of Jean Frederick Oberlin, whose simple message was that people with diverse perspectives can live in friendship with one another. Oberlin College in Ohio reflected that philosophy, being the first American educational institution to admit both men and women, black and white. Forty members of the Congregational Church, described as infected or inspired by Oberlinism, depending on where one stood on the issue, took possession of the church building by force, and a legal battle ensued. By 1902, the church building had been long abandoned, and it was torn down so that Manitow Road could be straightened. Another church noted on the 1872 map of West Greece is the Free Methodist Church. It was founded in 1861. The Lutheran Church of Concord was founded in 1910. The congregation met in the former Free Methodist Church building until it moved to Holmes Road. Concord Church celebrated its last service on September 14, 2018. The Morning Star Christian Fellowship Church now worships there. The hotels in Husik flourished for a while as they were on the stagecoach route to Lewiston. The Masonic Lodge had rooms on the upper floor of one of them. The Kidnapping and Disappearance of Captain William Morgan In 1826, a group of Masons abducted William Morgan, thinking it would stop him from publishing a book revealing their secret ceremonies. It is known that he was taken along Ridge Road to Niagara, and that stops were made at hotels, most likely including one in West Greece. No one knows what happened to Morgan. It is thought that he was murdered, but his abductors got off lightly. However, it had a profound effect on how people regarded Masons. Dr. Bradley, himself a Freemason, wrote in his journal, The Masonic Lodge flourished for a few years, but in consequence of the excitement caused by the untoward abduction of Morgan, it ceased to exist, together with all the secret organizations in the state. 
The outrage over the Morgan affair led Thurlow Weed, publisher of a newspaper in Rochester, founding the Anti-Masonic Party, the first third party in American political history. The Erie Canal greatly diminished activity on the ridge and the need for numerous hotels, but there were two long-standing hotels located in West Greece, William Kruger's Manchester Hotel on the northeast corner of Ridge and Manitow and Elmer Heights Arlington Hotel located at 4464 West Ridge Road. They were both built in the 1850s. The Manchester Hotel was known for its second floor ballroom with a spring floor, which made it a popular dance place for dances in Husik. There were tunnels underneath the Arlington Hotel, which has led to speculation that it was a stop on the Underground Railroad. Now called the Winslow Hotel, on Saturday, March 25, 1916, between 7 and 8 p.m., the old Manchester was wrecked when the acetylene gas plant exploded after the owner, Oscar Winlow, lit a match to check on the faulty gas lighting. There were eight people in the hotel at the time of the explosion, but only two were injured. Winslow suffered a broken leg, and a Mrs. Howard Pitcher sustained burns about her head. The force of the explosion was felt by people a mile away. The hotel was massively damaged. Walls were splintered, and the hotel was partially shifted from its foundation. The porch and part of the front roof collapsed when their supports were shattered. However, true tragedy was averted by the timing of the explosion. Forty couples were due to arrive at the hotel for a dinner and dance party. If the explosion had occurred an hour later, it most likely would have resulted in some loss of life. After the explosion, Winslow had to fire for bankruptcy, and he sued the manufacturer of the gas machinery. The hotel was rebuilt and was used as a rooming house until the mid-20th century. Circa 1906, Thomas Streb became the owner of the Arlington Hotel and changed the name to Streb's. His son Raymond took over in 1936 until his death in 1956. Like the Manchester Hotel, Streb's also was almost destroyed. About 1.30 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, August 21, 1938, a nurse driving by the hotel on Ridge Road noticed smoke curling from the corner of the three-story barn joined to the hotel by a long car shed. She ran into the hotel and alerted Ray Streb. The barn blazed up in a flash, endangering the hotel. The nurse then helped Streb's mother and aunt, who were dining with Streb at the time, and who both were in ill health to the safety of a neighboring home. After summoning a doctor for the two elderly women, the unidentified nurse quietly left the scene. Volunteer firefighters from North Greece and the Greece Ridge battled the blaze. Passing motorists assisted Streb in removing furniture and other valuables from the hotel, but the fire was brought under control before it could damage the hotel. Streb and two firefighters suffered burns. Both the North Greece Fire Department and the Greece Ridge Fire Department are celebrating their centennials this year. We congratulate the firefighters on 100 years of service. When Robert McCombs purchased the hotel in 1960, he kept the recognizable name of Streb's. Diners could order lobster tails, prime rib, filet mignon, ham steak, broiled spring chicken, lamb chops, calves liver, Long Island duckling, veal cutlet, and chicken French. The steakhouse was particularly known for its prime rib, lobster tails, and clams casino. In 1991, McComb's daughter Robin took over when her father retired to Florida. Streb Steakhouse was the last of the early Greece taverns on the ridge. It was torn down in 2013. Husik's heyday was fleeting. Bypassed by the Erie Canal, it didn't develop much beyond its beginnings. Today, the area is a hub for those interested in getting a new car, as it is the site of numerous new and used automobile dealerships. Thanks for joining us this week. Next week, we'll look at Husik's most famous resident, Dr. Samuel Beach Bradley. This is Maureen Whalen, inviting you to join us next Tuesday for another Bicentennial Snapshot, presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified when there's more Bicentennial Snapshots.
You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. You can follow us on Twitter at Greece NY History. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road. 